The transformation uh, of Chicago between 1950 and the present is, is really incredible. Today, uh, Chicago is ranked as the sixth most important global city in the world. In the 1950s, Chicago was very different. It was, it was ethnic and parochial. It was sort of dark and drab. It was like a Rust Belt city, a true Rust Belt city. And that transformation coincides uh, with uh, more than four decades of the dailies uh, leading Chicago. The first mayor daily was born in 1902. He, he, he became a, a mayor of Chicago in 1955. Chicago had had a political machine before the first mayor, mayor daily, but he turned the, pol the political machine into the daily machine. The song uh, evolved a lot as a person um, and, and as a professional, and the 60s were a big part of it. Rich Daly came of age in the 1960s, and there was a lot of turmoil. The song saw the protests with regard to race. The song saw the protests with regard uh, to the 1968 convention, the Vietnam War. And a lot of these protesters who were, were young people uh, were really uh, against the first mayor daily. And when he became a leader, when he came to power, he took different positions than his father, more, more uh, progressive social positions, more progressive race positions, more progressive positions with regard to um, uh, gays and so forth. And I think a lot of that is because he was deeply um, shaken up by the events of the 60s, and he sort of uh, decided that when he came to power, when his turn, he would do things differently than his father. Rich Daly ran for mayor twice in the 80s. He, he, he lost badly in 1983 to Harold Washington, and he had a big victory in 89. So in the course of six years, it was a big turn of events for, for uh, the second Daly. And the reason was he changed tremendously as a person in, in, in the decade of the 80s. So in the 83, you had Harold Washington, who was a very charismatic, very talented black politician. And quite frankly, in 1983, Rich Daly just was no match for Harold Washington. He wasn't ready. Um, in 1989, he had evolved a lot as a person and, and as a politician. He had much more sophisticated advisors, uh, young guys uh, who were unfamiliar then, but who are familiar now, guys like Rahm Emanuel, David Axelrod, Bill Daly, who were all young guys back then, and they were uh, smart, liberal, and aggressive, and they were different than the crew who advised uh, Daly in 83. So that was a big part of his victory in 89. And when Obama uh, took over the White House, uh, all these close Daly advisors went with him to the White House. His first chief of staff was Rahm Emanuel. Rahm Emanuel is like an adopted son politically to Rich Daly, and Barack Obama chose Rahm Emanuel to be his first chief of staff. So there's very tight links. Uh, between Daly's two decades of rule in Chicago and the rise of the first black president and the first president from Chicago, uh, Barack Obama. So Rich Daly had some huge accomplishments in his two decades in office. Uh, one of the things that he'll be remembered for is, is taking big risks. So uh, in 1995, he took over the Chicago Public Schools, the first big city mayor in the country to do that. Uh, around the turn of the century, uh, around 2000, he uh, took over uh, Chicago public housing, and did something called the Plan for Transformation. Both of those were very risky. He did it uh, because he really uh, wanted to help people, like real middle class average people. And he was willing to take big risks to do that. And I think Daly will be remembered for that. Interestingly, most of his accomplishments occurred in his first 10 to 12 years office. And most of his uh, mistakes and controversies uh, uh, occurred in his last decade in office. In uh, 2003, he uh, destroyed Meg's Field in the middle of the night, which you know, viol violated democratic norms. There was a bunch of scandals, including something called the hired truck scandal. 48 people in his administration went to jail, which which is a bad thing. Uh, and then he, he, he sort of lost his financial discipline. For his first uh, 12 years in office, from 1989 to 2001, Daly balanced every budget, which is a good thing. It's, it's hard to, to balance budget. It shows a lot of discipline as a leader. Starting in 2001 all the way through 2011, uh, Daly ran big deficits. So I think Rich Daly is going to have a very positive uh, legacy. History is going to look kindly on him. He helped transform Chicago from uh, a Rust Belt city to a global city. He provided two decades of political leadership. Uh, he helped. Um, improve race relations in Chicago. He took on big risks, which his father was unwilling to do. He took on the public schools and public housing. And Rahm Emanuel is going to follow in that tradition. He understands that Rich Daly was a, a very good mayor, a mayor for history, but he wasn't perfect. And there's some things that uh, the second Daly, some risks he didn't take, that I think Rahm Emanuel is going to take on. And I think Rahm Emanuel is purposely following in Daly's tradition. So he's going to be a strong mayor who takes on big risks and follows in a 100-year history of uh, Daly's in the Chicago.